Sir opens up about addiction, relationships, and his new album, Heavy, on the next Morning Edition from NPR News. Tomorrow morning at 5 on 90.1 WABE. You're listening to 90.1 WABE Atlanta. This is Closer Look for Wednesday, March 20th. I'm Rose Scott. Georgia is among the top states with a significant public school rural population, but there are challenges for its students. I'll speak with the superintendent of the Tolliver County School District, Alan Fort. Also this hour... My kids want to continue here. I ask them, you know, if you want to go to public school, like my son will be in the sixth grade next year, and I'm like, do you want to go to public school? And he's like, nope, I want to stay here. You know, they just like where this is going. Um, they have other students that are, you know, that won't be here next year, but she wants to stay. An Atlanta parent says the micro school's learning environment works for her kids. Plus, administrators from a school with a focus on students with special learning needs share how the school uses what's cited as thorough academic and experimental programming. All that's just ahead, but first, this what can we expect this weekend? Atlanta's most accurate and dependable forecast is coming up. Police investigating, investigating yet another violent attack at a Metro Atlanta school. The latest incident happening at Sprayberry High School in Marietta, where one student stabbed another student multiple times. Just stay in the classroom and call them mom. No word on the victim's condition except confirmation that he or she is being treated. Meantime, two students are in custody. As Texas fights to instill a law allowing the arrest of people suspected of crossing the border, Georgia's top elections official ties the issue to election security. Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger applauds Texas's attempt to enact its own border measures. He says Americans are concerned about non-citizens voting, but it's never happened here. We want to make sure in Georgia only American citizens vote, and that's why I'm the first Secretary of State to do a full citizenship verification so the voters know that non-citizens are not voting in Georgia. Raffensperger says since 1997, 1,600 non-citizens unsuccessfully tried to register to vote. A case-by-case -case deep dive finds they were putting to pending citizenship status until their documents were verified. Veronica Waters, 95.5 WSB. The Clayton County jury has reached a verdict in the case of a woman accused of pouring oil and grease on a child. It took jurors less than an hour to find Miracle Mateen not guilty on all charges. Shine was 10 years old when it happened and spent more than 200 days in the hospital with multiple burns on her body. Her mother, Stephanie May. I don't see no remorse. No sympathy and no nothing, and she's still trying to pin this and blame this on my daughter. The defense claimed it was simply a tragic accident. Georgia Senate Republicans gut a bill on mental health for student athletes to include measures opponents say target transgender youth. The Senate's version of the bill now includes measures banning transgender athletes from playing girls' sports using bathrooms that don't align with their sex at birth. Education and Youth Committee Chairman Senator Clint Dixon. What this bill basically does, it empowers parents, informs parents of issues in schools with different subject matters and it also protects kids. Andrea Kramer, whose son is transgender, tells me the gutting of the bill is underhanded. This is not the way democracy is supposed to work. The legislation has to be voted on by the full Senate and House. From the state capitol, Jonathan O'Brien, 95.5 WSB. Georgia's 2025 football schedule includes some history. For the first time ever, the Texas Longhorns will visit Sanford Stadium. The SEC will stick with an eight-game conference schedule in 2025, flipping home and away opponents from this season. Georgia's other home games next year will be Alabama, Kentucky and Old Miss with road games against Tennessee, Auburn, Mississippi State, as well as the annual border war with Florida in Jacksonville. Georgia's road schedule also includes a trip to Pasadena, California to play UCLA at the Rose Bowl. Bill Cayaccio, 95.5 WSB. And tennis could serve big changes soon. Pro tennis could undergo a major overhaul if proposals by the four Grand Slam tournaments to get rid of its current structure are approved. They'd create a new premier tour for the top 100 male and female players and a lower level contenders tour. Both would feature relegation and promotion similar to soccer structure. And all events would give players equal prize money. The U.S. Tennis Association says the changes could actually help boost the sport's value by as much as a billion dollars a year. The changes wouldn't happen until at least 2026. Monica Ricks. CBS News. It's 7.04. This news brought to you by A Total Plumbing. Now live team coverage of traffic and weather. Josie Rock is in the WSB 24-hour traffic center. Looking at the car fire cleanup in College Park. It's on I-85 southbound at Camp Creek Parkway. Exit 72.
2. Still knocks out two of your left lanes. We've been watching the delays leaving East Point for well over two hours now. You can take I-75 south towards the International Terminal to avoid that. And elsewhere, GDOT has been reporting new trouble in DeKalb County. Just found it on the jam cam. It's a crash. I-20 eastbound past Wesley Chapel Road. Got at least one right lane block there, which is adding to the volume delays, leaving the perimeter and heading into Stonecrest. This report is sponsored by Indeed.com. Make the hiring process work for you. With Indeed's in-in hiring solution, you can attract, interview, and hire candidates all from one place. Start at Indeed.com slash credit. I'm Josie Rock, 95.5 WSB. This is WSB Meteorologist Christina Edwards. A few clouds for tonight. Temperatures falling to the upper 40s. Tomorrow, warming up to